Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how we can create an aim offset asset so that the character looks in the direction of the camera and doesn't just look forward in the facing direction of its body. That way the character feels a bit more reactive before the turn in place catches up to our camera rotation. This aim offset has poses for looking side to side, but we can also look up and down. To begin, you'll need an aim offset asset. If you're following along with the UUS animations, one is provided. There is also an unarmed aim offset asset that comes with the Lyra animations, which you can use if you are following along with those. I'll provide a link in the description where you can download the necessary idle animations and aim offset asset from the Lyra animation set to make the process of following along with this video easier. But instead of using a pre-built aim offset asset, I want to go over the process of preparing a set of animations and then creating an aim offset asset from scratch so that you can better understand the process, how aim offsets work, and how to implement them properly. In this folder, I have a set of animations. These are from the unarmed upright strafing animation set. However, they're quite similar to what you'll see in Lyra, as these animations were made specifically to match the Lyra system approach to aim offsets. I'll go ahead and open up one of the aim offsets now. The first and one of the most important settings you'll notice is that this animation is set to be an additive animation in mesh space, and it is set to be relative to this forward-facing pose animation. This is specific to the UUS animation set, as it has a single frame animation that is this forward-facing pose. If you are using the Lyra animations, you'll want your additive animations to be relative to the first frame of your idle, unarmed, ready animation. To properly set up your animations and to ensure that all of their settings are set properly, you can select them all, go to Asset Actions, and choose Bulk Edit via Property Matrix. Here we have the Additive Settings section where you can set everything to Mesh Space, to have a base pose from a selected animation frame and then to ensure that the base pose animation is set properly. With all of that done, your additive animations will be set up properly and we can move on to creating an aim offset asset. To do so, right click, go to animation and choose aim offset and select the appropriate skeleton. Opening up the aim offset, you'll see that it is structured in a very similar way to blend space assets. To my recollection, I've not yet covered any sort of blend space in this series, but it allows you to blend in between a variety of poses. And with that, at least with locomotion and foot movement, well, it can lead to a variety of problems. And one of the reasons orientation warping is used in place of blend spaces in the Lyra animation system. I want to eventually make some videos covering alternative implementations of some of our locomotion states that use blend spaces as opposed to orientation warping. I'll definitely get to that at some point. We have two directions that we can blend in in this aim offset. We have a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. We will tie the horizontal axis to the yaw rotation of the character, so I will name it yaw. I will now name the vertical axis pitch. For the minimum axis value of the horizontal axis, I'll set it to negative 180. I'll set the maximum value to positive 180. For pitch, I will set the minimum value to negative 90 and the maximum value to 90. I'm going to enable snap to grid for each of these axes. And that'll make it easier to place animations properly as we drag them into our 
blend area here. Next, I want to bring your attention to the smoothing time setting for both axes. I'm going to set it to 0.5 for the horizontal axis and leave the other settings at their defaults. And this will help smooth the transition between the negative 180 degree threshold and the positive 180 degree threshold as the character moves its head from looking behind to the right to looking behind to the left. It will be easier to see in action once we add our animations into our aim offset, which we will do now. Opening the content browser, I have a set of animations here. I'll go ahead and find the center facing animation. In this case, it's the first one right here, and I'm going to drag it into the graph and place it in the very center where both yaw and pitch are zero. Next, well, I'm going to go ahead and dock this content browser in my layout to make it a little bit easier to access both it and the aim offset that we are dragging these animations into. I'll go ahead and bring in the center down aim offset animation, as well as the center up. So now if I hold control and move my mouse, we can see that Unreal Engine creates a smooth blend from looking up to looking down and vice versa. I'll go ahead and grab this right center animation and bring it to the far end of the aim offset on the right side. I'll do the same for right down and right up. Now we can blend from forward facing to looking to the right. I'll now repeat the process for the left. Left down, left up, and left center. We can now look from side to side and up and down, all inside a single aim offset asset. And you can see because of that smoothing time, if I, while holding control, bring my mouse out of the blender graph, up and around to the other side, it does not instantly jump over, which creates a smoother transition, which we'll be able to see more clearly once we implement this aim offset into our animation system, which I will do now. I'll go ahead and save this aim offset and give it a name as I neglected to do that earlier. I'll name it AO in look. And because this is the second aim offset asset I've created in this file, I'll go ahead and just add a two. As there's nothing stopping you from using the pre-provided aim offset asset, I just wanted to cover the process of setting one up. I'll now navigate to our folder, which contains our animation blueprints. I'll open up the base animation blueprint asset and make my way to the animation graph. I'm going to create some room in between the locomotion state machine and the additives for jump recovery and acceleration based leaning. I'm now going to open up the contents browser and navigate to our aim offset asset. I'm going to drag it into our animation graph. We now have an aim offset player. I'll plug the locomotion state machine output in as the base pose, and I'll plug the output pose into our apply additive node for our acceleration lean additive. Next, I'm going to provide the yaw and pitch inputs. I'll go ahead and make my way over to our blueprint thread safe update animation function, and I'll enter into our git rotation data function. Here we set an actor yaw value, which we eventually use to calculate our 
root yaw offset. I'm going to create some room here and I'm going to go ahead and create a simple aim pitch float variable. I'm going to right click and get a new property access node. Within the property access node, I'm going to call the try get pawn owner function. And from that, I'm going to call the get base aim rotation function. And specifically, I'm going to get the pitch component of the aim rotation rotator. With that, I'm going to drag out. And just to be sure that the rotation values follow the correct range, I'm going to get a normalize axis node, which will normalize any rotation null value to a range of negative 180 degrees to positive 180 degrees. Out of normalize axis, I'm going to create a new variable, which I will name aim pitch. I'll now take aim pitch and move it into our rotation data category. And finally, I'll plug the set aim pitch node into our execution flow so that we set it properly before we use it. Back in our animation graph, I'll go ahead and get our aim pitch variable. I'm also going to get our root yaw offset float variable. I'm going to multiply our root yaw offset by negative one as the goal of this aim offset is to have the character looking in the same direction as the camera. And because we're counter rotating the root as we rotate the camera, if we then negate the root yaw offset that we're applying, that should cause our aim offset to have the character look back in a direction that matches the camera to the extent of the rotational freedom the character has within the aim offset as the neck of a human can only turn so far and that is reflected in the coverage of our aim offset animations. I'll plug aim pitch into the pitch input directly. Now let's see what things look like if we play. It looks like everything is working quite well. As the character is moving the head to look around as I rotate my camera, but before the turn in place animation plays to catch everything up. Now I have noticed an issue. Well, I've encountered an issue when using the Lyra animations in the Lyra animation set in my system. I am not sure exactly why, but when applying the aim offset using the Lyra animations, I run into some blending issues with the foot IK bones. The aim offset seems to be having some odd effect on them. It may be specific to my project. However, if you encounter blending issues with the foot IK that causes odd foot behavior that's caused by the additives in your graph, we can get around that by disconnecting our locomotion state machine from our additives. And now I'm going to drag out from our locomotion state machine and use a node I've not yet used before and it is quite useful. I'm going to search save and select new save cached pose. We can save a pose from a node in our animation graph. I'm going to name this pose locomotion and now we can reuse this pose elsewhere in our graph. You may have noticed previously that you could not plug a single animation node into multiple other animation nodes, and this allows you to save a pose and reuse it throughout your system. It is quite handy. I'll go ahead and search Use Locomotion, and I can now access our saved pose. I will plug it into our aim offset for looking. I'm now going to disconnect our final apply additive node. We've now separated out our additive section from the rest of our animation graph. I'm going to drag out from 
this final apply additive node and I'm going to search layered blend per bone. I'm going to plug the apply additive node into the blend poses zero input of the layered blend per bone. I'm going to copy our locomotion pose and plug it into the base pose input of our layered blend per bone node. What this layered blend per bone is doing is it's blending the pose of the blend pose input onto the base pose, but only in the way that we specify through either a branch filter or a blend mask. I'm going to leave the setting on branch filter and I'm going to add a branch filter. The branch filter property takes in a bone name and a blend depth. The branch filter has two inputs, a bone name and a blend depth. The bone name is the bone that the filter starts at. The blend depth input determines the number of bones down the chain from the bone name bone that the blending is applied to. So if I were to type pelvis and then provide a blend depth of three, it would blend the additive pose onto the pelvis, then onto spine one, spine two, then spine three before ending, as we only have a blend depth of three. A blend depth of zero will blend all bones, including the bone name bone that are under the hierarchy of the bone name bone. So this would blend the additive onto the pelvis and all bones that are children of the pelvis in the character's skeleton. A value of negative one would blend the would specifically tell the layered blend per bone node to not blend on the pelvis or any other bones below it in the hierarchy. This could allow us to, for example, blend a pose down all the bones below the pelvis, but then we could add another branch filter and let's type upper, upper arm L and supply a blend depth value of negative one. Now we blend on all the bones, including the pelvis that are below the pelvis in the hierarchy, but then we exclude the left upper arm, which will mean that we apply the additive to all bones, pelvis included, that affect the position of the skeletal mesh, except for the left arm. What we're going to do with this setup is a bit simpler. we're going to blend onto the root bone with a depth of zero. So this is going to apply the additive to all bones in the skeleton, including the root. So absolutely everything. Now I'm going to type in IK foot root for the second branch filter, and I'm going to supply a blend depth value of a negative one. So now we first blend our additive onto all bones in the skeleton, while specifically excluding the foot root IK bone and all bones that are a child of the foot root IK bone, which would be the IK bone for the left foot and the IK bone for the right foot. With that done, we can plug the result of our layered blend per bone node into our inertialization node. And that should exclude the IK feet bones from our additive process which means that once we process our pose through the leg IK bone, where the feet are returned to the positions of the IK feet bones, it will override any offset or odd blending that the additive nodes introduce. This may not be a necessary step, but if you encounter the same problem that I described, this is a way to solve it. It's more we can observe the effect of the aim offset now that the foot IK is not being affected, though with the UUS animations in this current project, it does not seem to, it did not seem to have an effect in the first place.